All right. It's another week of Allow Me to Be Frank. Uh, it's uh, been a crazy whirlwind the last week. Uh, I guess that would be an understatement after Rough and Rowdy and uh, Jenks uh, knocking out Owen Unable. Uh, and then uh, the 20th anniversary Barstool Awards. Uh, more Mets misery. Uh, word that the uh, Mets are going to trade uh, Pete Alonso uh, for uh, Darren Ruff and uh, everything else that's going on. Uh, then we have uh, Ryan Clark saying that he wants Tua to go to be uh, twitching on the floor, at which point uh, Scott Van Pelt started doing a uh, jig behind him. So, uh, What's going on with everyone else? Um, one thing I will say, because there are some good Frank facts kind of sprinkled in there, is you called the Pete Alonzo thing well before it became real. And now it seems very real. Like it's actually being reported and he's being asked about it after games. Do you think they're just going to dump him for shit? Yep. It's unbelievable. You've called everything from opening day. I've never seen that before. It's a uh, billion effort. Uh, um, you see, uh, Buckshaw Walter doesn't like uh, Pete. It has he really to, doesn't. It has to be the worst superpower, though, for Frank to to know to be right all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and still be a fan. It's it's doesn't make sense to me. But uh, he, uh, but uh, Buck Buck shit show uh, does not like Pete Alonso. It's it's it's, it's a clear. He made him stop saying fuck. He took away his personality. Uh, he uh, embraces players like DJ Stewart, who is a fucking bum. Last DJ Stewart uh, is probably one of the worst defensive outfielders I've ever seen. He is a certified 2018 Oriole bum. That uh, I think Buck's favorite team was the 2018 Orioles because that was the year he went um, 46 and 116, and he loved that year. That was that was the funnest year of his life. Do you think they definitely bring him back? Yes. No way, Frank. They're not yep, going to bring him back. They're bringing back back. Okay. Um, and um, it, 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 the next year's team is going to be uh, the starting rotation. They might even trade Senga. The next year's starting rotation is going to be uh, David uh, Peterson is eight ERA, <laughs> uh, Jose Butto and his nine ERA, uh, Tyler Seagal, uh, Miguel in uh, his seven ERA. Uh, they're going to uh, uh, get uh, Jordan Lyles, who has um, uh, got an ERA of nine for the Royals. They'll bring back Jared Eichhoff, and it will be the bums. Uh, Darren Ruff will be traded, uh, will be reacqu reacquired for Pete Alonso. Uh, Danny Mendick will be the uh, starting second baseman. Uh, third base uh, will be the uh, uh, certified bust, Brett Beatty. The catcher will be Tomas Nito, and uh, uh, they'll bring back Kevin Ploiecki, or maybe uh, Ofor Navarez, who I don't. I think it's been like a month since Omar Ofor Navarez actually got a hit. Yeah, uh, they'll trade Brandon Nemo. They'll trade. Uh, they'll keep uh, Lindor because they can't uh, trade him, and Lindor will be checked out again. Uh, we'll have uh, left field will be DJ Stewart. Center field will be. Uh, they'll bring back Travis Jankowski. The right fielder will be Rafael Ortega, and the team will lose 125 games. Frank, I thought you were on a Mets, like, protest. I thought you just weren't paying attention to them. I thought you weren't going to give a fuck about them. So much has happened this week. We had Jenks knock somebody out in Rough and Rowdy. We had the 20th anniversary that we're obviously going to talk about. But for the last four minutes, you guys <laughs> Mets rant. Well... I, all I know is I was right about Pete Alonso. Yes, Frank. Yeah, you were absolutely right. You were right about every single thing the Mets have done this year. I just – I thought you were checked out. That wasn't prepared for it. Well, welcome to we the show, start, Mikey. We had to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I guess we did. I guess we did. Um, you know what else sucks, Frank? Mets suck. But uh, what really sucks is somebody getting snubbed from that award show last night. <laughs> It's a little rough. That was a tough that scene. Was shocking. That was shocking. <laughs> it's a tough scene. And it's also so the the award was for craziest fan for anybody that didn't see the Barstool Awards. 
And two of the nominees were obviously Frank the Tank, and then there was Frankie Borelli, who's a diehard Islanders fan. So when they announced the winner, they started with Frank. So like it sounded like they were going to say Frank the Tank. I like I was ready to cheer. Frank starts getting up, and then Frank, what ran through your mind? Like what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I I mean I mean uh, the, that snub to me is like uh, somewhat like the. Uh, uh, 1990 Oscars, so 91 Oscars probably, uh, with uh, Dances with Wolves winning uh, Best Picture and uh, Kevin Costner winning Best Director over Martin Scorsese and Goodfellas. It's crazy. Great, great comparison. It's like, um, I, I mean, I mean, Dances yeah. with Wolves. That movie sucked. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, are you going after Frankie Borelli? <laughs> what what movie? What movie do people rewatch over and over again? Goodfellas. Goodfellas. What movie is a timeless classic? Now, Borelli is a big Islander fan. I respect his uh, fandom. But it was for craziest fan. Not most loyal fan. Not, not best fan. It was for craziest fan. And there's nobody more crazy than me. I love that you just you, – you're pissed that, like, you didn't get the crazy award. Like that's what we've been working for the last like three four years. Why the fuck did I get this crazy award? I I, then, um, so crazy. I mean I I mean Borelli Borelli is very loyal. He, if it was loyal fan, but it was for craziest fan. There's nobody crazier than me. No, then, crazy, Frank. Frank, for all the all the crazy talk, you took the microphone to close the show unscripted and gave such a positive message that like. I know Barstool doesn't like to be corny or whatever, but you have an incredible story that inspires people. And that clip's that down like mega viral already. But I'm just curious, like, did that come just come to you in the moment? Did you think about it on your way up? Um, like, how'd that come out? I was thinking about the first speech about the, uh, as a court clerk, don't give up your dreams. That, that came up. Uh, I was thinking about, hey, if I win an award, what will I say? And that's, that's what came to my mind. Right, that was great. Um, the music behind it on the first one was awesome. You know, the uh, Any Given Sunday speech with Al Pacino. Loved it. But whoever made that Dreams of Nightmare <laughs> remix, oh, my God, give them a raise. Give them every <laughs> name that they deserve because that was the best thing of all time. Wonder who it was. Um, <laughs> oh, where do they sit you? That was a – what was that? They put them in the, the fat, fat pen. 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 Yes. The fat pen. Always – you know, <laughs> they might have they might have thought it was an insult, but I, I tell you what, <laughs> uh, me, Evan, and Glennie had the most comfortable seats in the house. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Had a good view, had a good view of the stage, uh, good view of everything, comfortable seat. It looked more Just like VIP. The there was a little bit of there was a little hay around us, but you know that was it was nice. It was, <laughs> it was comfortable. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. So, what was uh, give us a little of the, of the behind the scenes? You had to go from Bo from the office to Boston. How was the trip? Oh, long, long. Okay. Long. Yeah. How long is that that drive from? Uh, Four hours. Oh, okay. Jeez. Bus. So uh, the bus left uh, Barstool's office at eleven o'clock. Um, got to Boston probably around three thirty. Uh, there was a hotel where a staging area where everyone was at, getting dressed, getting changed, getting ready for the show. Then we took the bus to the uh, the venue. Uh, we went upstairs for about an hour at the venue and did the blue, then, then did the, the red carpet. Now, they bring me down for the red carpet just before I was about to go to the bathroom. And then they have me standing around out there, and I'm, I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. Please let me walk out there. <laughs> uh, I mean... Uh, I was uh, I was about um, ninety seconds from repeating a Jerry. Yes, oh no! Oh. A catastrophe oh. on the on the car. Uh, honestly, would have been an all time moment. Would have been. I an mean, I mean, uh, the at the hotel they had like this like uh, terrible buffet. It had like uh, oh, this like hummus chicken shit, which I didn't touch, and they had this uh, chicken soup. And I don't think the chicken soup agreed to me. Did you say that one? Did you say the McClure? <laughs> it wasn't the McClure. It was like some other Copeland, 
Copley Square Hotel, Marriott Copley Square, something like that. Okay. It was like at a conference room. A, nice. a saloon, they call it. They call it a salon. So the awards go on. And uh, there was a little bit of a meet and greet after the show. But then we said we had to be on the bus at 10.30. So I get to the bus at 10.30. And uh, there were a couple of people who were planning to take the bus and change their mind. So they said that uh, we, we forgot to pick them up. So we had to circle back to uh, uh, the venue, which was uh, the House of Blues. It was uh, ac literally across the street from Fenway Park. Oh, wow. Literally across the street from Fenway Park. I mean, when we were up on the second floor uh, before the event, before the show, uh, having some pizza and stuff like that, they had another buffet up there, better buffet up there, by the way. Um, you look out the window, you could actually see, like, uh, center field, the, uh, behind the center field uh, scoreboard. Oh, wow. How far away so, did you get before you guys had to circle back? About half a mile. Oh, okay. Um, and the driver we had, the driver we had, I think might have been a reject from uh, New Jersey Transit. Yes, it was <laughs> terrible. Uh, so, for some in Boston, Frank? No. Oh, okay. So we finally get uh, we uh, get on the bus, and of course, uh, I couldn't uh, continue my streak. So my my thirteen day of being number one streak ended on cameo. Ended up still, number. You still put up good numbers. It was like twenty seven, even 29. with all this going on. Yeah, twenty nine. Still not bad. A uh, uh, guy who charges like six dollars uh, got uh, uh, best at me. Yeah, I mean, with those so, prices, how can you uh, how yeah, can you compete? Yeah, right. Right? Yeah, you might on. have to. So, lower, what what would you do if you lowered your prices to six dollars? You'd have like <laughs> a thousand cameos. Yeah, I'd be dead. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um. Uh, I, I'm glad I finished ahead of Eric Cartman. That guy sucks. He's it's some guy that does it. It's 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 a guy who charges uh, one one ninety nine for his cameos, and he does a very poor imitation of uh, Eric Cartman. What does Buckley charge? I don't know. I think he charges. I think he charges like uh, a good amount. He charges yeah. respectable, respectable amount. Yeah. So uh, we get to the Barstool office at three o'clock in the morning. Jeez, Frank. So I uh, go upstairs, put my trophies on my desk. Of course. <laughs> had to uh, had to go to the bathroom, call an Uber. Finally got home about uh, 4 a.m. and did uh, some 24-hour cameos before going to bed at 5.30 this morning. Uh, Frank, you yeah, I was going to say you weren't going to take the New Jersey Transit, obviously. No, at three a.m. New Jersey at three at three a.m. New Jersey Transit doesn't even exist. Yeah, um, yeah, that would that would be terrible. That so I, go ahead, Frank. So I took the Uber home and there we go. Sounds rough. I feel like uh, it was the same thing last week. Last week with in, <coughs> oh, Virginia but, and... but before we get into that, I wanted I need to take a little bit of a refreshment break. Yes, that's right. Yep. A nice refreshment break. You know, uh, we got this. Uh, let me see if I can get this thing to. Here we go. Yes, that's right. I got a nice Sprecher root beer here. And you know, Sprecher Brewing Company, they brew good things with they, these craft sodas. Sprecher sodas are fire brewed in gas kettles to create a unique caramelization flavor. And then they're sweetened with local honey and handcrafted in small batches out of Milwaukee. And you can taste the difference. Every bottle of Sprecher is quality. I got the Sprecher Root Beer here, which is their primary brand. This is their top brand. And they are available in a variety of flavors. The award-winning uh, Root Beer, Cream Soda, Cherry Cola, Orange Cream, which is my personal favorite, and many more. Check out the Sprecher family of brands at SpreckerBrewery.com to learn more. And if you try Sprecher Craft today, you'll get a 10% off your uh, shipment and your order by using the code TANK online at checkout. So visit Sprecher.com to shop for these beautiful, great sodas. I mean, one of the top root beers you can get is this Sprecher. We got the nice little Griffin here serving it up. And uh, 
Sprecher Soda. Go to uh, SpreckerBrewery.com. Use 10% off. To get 10% off, use Como Tank, and you will not be disappointed. Yeah, like I said, uh, the my favorite is Green River. Always will be. Always has been. <laughs> um, didn't know what to do there, Frank. Uh, Frank, yeah, Jenks. I had no idea what we were doing there, but that looked pretty cool. Kind of looks like yeah. a Game of Thrones logo. It's, yeah, you look at it. Looks like oh, a coat of It's coat of arms. Frank doesn't really want to talk about Game of Thrones. No House of Dragons. We'll we'll just skip over that. Um, we got to do a little rough and rowdy recap. I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We're going to bring up some rough and rowdy. We're going to talk about the weekend. But first, I mean, let's go through the whole – the whole how it started, how it's going. We wanted to talk more about it last week, but you were, you know, in the zone. So I had to go do weigh-in and stuff, and it was one of the funniest things because I was sitting there nervously waiting in line, and then I just hear Frank fucking screaming and banging because he was sitting ringside. Yeah. But there were people around the arena getting stuff set up for the weigh-in and the pre-show. But the way it started was Wednesday – I saw online that Abel was talking shit to all these different barstool people, and I already knew about his rivalry with Frank the Tank. So I texted Frank saying, hey, what do you think about me stepping in as your champion for Abel? And I think, Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you just responded LOL. And then I yeah, went Yeah, I, I mean, for Frank I mean, what, what happened was <laughs> uh, he was supposed to fight Trailer Park, uh, a rough and rowdy uh, favorite who – doesn't have much success to tell you the truth, but he's a uh, he's uh, a guy that um, had some bad luck. He there was a fight where he was winning and he threw up in the corner, and they called it uh, a TKO because they thought he was concussed. He uh, had another concussion, so he had to pull out. He's the guy that Dave got new teeth for. I remember he was fighting. Uh, he was fighting. Oh, oh, you know who he? You know who he went? He went against, He went up against that guy that. Uh, uh, what was his name? Country, I think it was Country uh, Redneck or something like that. Mm. Okay, I, I think that's who he fought, and it was uh, he got brutalized in that fight. But he's had some. He's had. He's had. He's a rough and rowdy favorite. They, they've got him new teeth, um, trying to help him out, and uh, it's, it's helped him. It's really helped him out a lot in life there. Uh, because I remember, uh, but he's uh, a, a rough and rowdy favorite, and he had to pull out this. These guys don't just fight rough and rowdy. They fight weekends in bars. So yeah. he had a concussion. So Jenks says on uh, Wednesday that he's going to uh, take the fight. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's not going to happen. They're, they're not going to, they're not going to, okay, a uh, guy just coming out of nowhere. The guy who may not be even close in weight, guy that may not be experienced, guy who's never boxed before to just say, okay, I'll take the fight. And, Suddenly happened now, 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 and especially at 48 hours notice. And I was quite actually shocked when I found out that they allowed him to, in, to fight. He responded, holy shit. When I, I texted him confirmation that I, I got in for the fight, he just wrote, holy shit. That was <laughs> it's a crazy, it's a crazy way to even go about it. Cause you just text, you DM big cat, right? You're like, Hey. I DM Big Cat thinking there was like a 5% chance he'd respond. He responded in like 15 minutes saying this could work. It took two hours for the West Virginia Boxing Commission to be on the phone with me and then uh, figured out how I was going to get out there. And Frank was great. Shout out to his god brother, Abe, who was so supportive and awesome. And also you, right. Mike, for, for driving out. And, Mike, you were with me. You could tell like leading up to the fight I was pretty quiet. I was locked in. Um, but I'll never forget, I said to Tank before the fight, I was like, I'm going to knock him out because Large gave me the advice. You're either going to focus on a way to get out of the fight or you're going to focus on a way to kick his ass, focus on the latter. So when I saw Tank, I said, I'm going to knock him out. And Tank looked at me and smiled and just said, indeed. Indeed. What, what, what's funny is, what's funny is to me is not that, you know, I, I, I make fun of the Ables because they really are poor fighters. They uh, they lead with their they lead with their face when they're throwing punches. They don't they don't do anything defense. Never keep the hands up. No hands up. They never keep the hands up. They 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 their faces their their faces are just clear ready ready for a pounding. And when they when they deliver punches, I I can't speak if it's hard or not, but it's it's a, it's a, it's it's not a it's not a punch that's like 
quick. It's not a quick jab. It's like you you can see the punch coming from a mile away. Yeah. Now, would there be a rematch? Is there going to be a rematch between uh, Jenks and, and Spencer, or is that a one and done? Is Jenks putting it up? Is he done? What's going on here? Uh, I'm definitely retiring with Frank as my manager, as his champion. I do have a lot of friends back home that have seen this that want to get involved in Rough and Rowdy, and I think they can not you know, necessarily fight for Frank's honor because I think that's a closed book and we won that battle. But if they want to get involved, they can get involved and keep the legacy going. But honestly you – know, it couldn't have gone better, so I, I'm I'm one and done. I'm now to the point with the Able Brothers. I I almost feel sorry for them. Yeah, I, I, I mean, retire. Frank is concerned for them. It's like pity now. It's kind of like uh, it was uh, fun. Well, they're anymore. gonna get hurt. They're gonna get hurt. Mm. I I mean so I mean the the other one Zach, who's a little bit of a better fighter. I mean, his nose is broken. It, it bloodied every fight. Every fight, his face gets bloody. If you look at my knockout, the right hand hits, he drops. There's a vicious left hand coming, though. And if that landed, too, like, I, I just worry he could get really hurt because he's a good dude. I, I talked to Spencer. Like, if, you know, if, these, if, these, if, these, if these guys fought people who could actually, like, yeah, the professional boxers. Know what they're doing. <clears throat> they, they wouldn't have they didn't, And that's why, that's why oh, he has not won. He has not won a fight. He's 0-5 he's now. My hair thing broke. And when I threw those last four punches, I had a mop on my head. I couldn't see. Yeah, that was wild. That was nice. You know, there, 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 there was a rule at one time where if, if you lost too much, you had to take six months off. In old days in boxing, if you if you got knocked out like three times in a year, you could have your license suspended. Frank, how did you... How did you feel? Because you know me, you've known me for a while. You know I'm in, in like whatever good shape, but you've never seen me in a in a real, you know, physical fight. When we were walking out with the music and the and the smoke, for me, I, I was like blacked out, electric. But I'm curious, what was it like for you? I didn't hear anything. It was almost like, okay, here we go. And then uh, when, you, when he went down the first time. I, I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna go well. This is gonna go well. And when, uh, when, uh, yeah, when Abel went down like uh, twenty seconds into the first round, it was that like was great. It was great, absolutely great. And then I think what you knock him down a total of three times, right? It was a total. The of three second times. time was more of a hip toss because he was trying to get wrestly with me, and yeah. Lar Large gave me the advice before the fight. He said, if he tries to get dirty and close, you just shove him hard. The ref will be pissed, but it doesn't matter. It's rough and rowdy. So rather than shove him, I kind of if you it's like a hip toss, where it's, it looks like yeah. a punch, but I more threw him to the ground. And then yeah. the the last one was just a clean hit, and he just crumpled. And when you crumple like that, there, there, there's no there's no you don't there's no decision. You just call the fight. Yeah. I love the automatic conspiracy theory too. Oh, just oh, uh, he's been training for months. Frank uh, Frank brought in this guy that has been boxing forever. Blah blah blah. This and that. Nuts. Nuts. I love it. It's the greatest compliment ever. And growing up, you know, shout out to all my friends I grew up with in, in Westchester 914. My best friends would get into fights all the time, and I never was allowed to. So for all of them, not only to watch me win and compete, but then be accused of being a, a professional was absolutely hilarious. What time did you guys end up getting back? You guys got back at what, 2 a.m.? Well, that, oh. that was interesting. That was interesting, but, uh, but you know. Couldn't pump your gas. Eesh. I, I, I guess, I guess uh, uh, Matt Jenks is the dog of the week, and so if you have a dog, you want to make that dog happy with BarkBox. Make that dog happy with BarkBox. Two toys, two treats, and a chew. Shift gift right fully to you. So make your dog happy with BarkBox. Make your dog happy. That's right. We have partnered up with BarkBox. So go to BarkBox.com slash tank and get a free extra month when you subscribe. That's BarkBox. Make your dog happy. And get a free extra month. BarkBox.com slash tank. Make your dog happy. You know, this is a dog this week, Frank. You know, you know, it was, you know it was great. Oh, so good. Tell us, uh, tell us the trip real quick. Go ahead, and I'll, I'll get the, the Wawa story, Frank. Yeah, I want to hear this. Um, 
this is what happened. Now we will go. I, I wanted to go to Seinfeld night, which was Saturday, and get a uh, so smoke a George a okay. George Costanza a George Costanza bobblehead and let me uh, get that real fast. See, I definitely should have came to the office because that looks way nicer than this setup. setup yeah, right. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> Well, I forgot. I forgot everything. I was like, "Cool, I'll, be, I'll have time to go to the office," and I forgot everything. I, whatever, no big deal. What's up, Ray? Uh, how about my How about my setup? Hey, you're Some dolphined out. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I got the uh, George Costanza bobblehead, which is, I mean, th- th- it's Seinfeld night. They do it every year at uh, at the Brooklyn Cyclones game. Could there be a better bobblehead than this? It's it's George Costanza with a titleless in his hand. On a whale. It's the best. It's the best uh, bobblehead since the. What's the other one that they, they had? The ocean one. They had another one. Yeah, that's the one that that, that, that Doug's has. Okay. So anyway, we. Uh, so I was basically like, it was initially okay. We, I want to get out of uh, West Virginia after the show. I want to get that because it's a it's a good six hour drive, six seven hour drive from uh, Wheeling to uh, New Jersey. By the way, time out. Wheeling, West Virginia, fucking sucks. That's one of the worst places in the world, Frank. Yeah, not, is, not if you're Janks. Dude, uh, yeah, not if you're Janks. It's very cool. It's probably one of the most historic moments. But, dude, that is, that was, no thank you. Never again. The, 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 the best thing Wheeling has going for it is yeah. it's, is Ohio's not far, and uh, it's pretty close to Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's the so, only thing. Yeah, that is the only thing. Pittsburgh. I mean, I don't know how great being close to Ohio is. <laughs> what the hell is there to do in Ohio? Um, there's you, more than LeBron we. LeBron used to be there. LeBron used to be there. Pretty cool. Talking but about LeBron. It, it, well, it, it, it's really close to Pittsburgh. Yeah, it is really close. Cool. I like Pittsburgh minutes. though. Pittsburgh's fun. Pitt, Pittsburgh's cool. a good time. Yeah. So the event ends. So it's me, Frank, and Abe, his god brother. His god brother driving the whole way through the night so we can make it for Seinfeld night. I'm still in my boxing outfit, like literally. Uh, yeah, I, I took a little nap. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think you being night. in your boxing outfit's that bad, though. <laughs> it was a pretty quick fight. I mean, I doubt you smelled that bad. Yeah. Yeah, it was all right. I think I was okay. I was, uh, I was, um, Taking a little uh, dry, riding shotgun, took a took a nap. I don't know how long I was out for. A couple but, hours. But I woke up. Uh, uh, the sun was starting to rise, and uh, I did a few cameos, of course, in the in the in the in the car there. Uh, we finally get to uh, we as and as we're getting to New Jersey, uh, our my gas tank's starting to get low. So I see that there's a Wawa nearby, and I. I have a Wawa uh, gas oh, card. Sorry, Frank. Uh, a Wawa, twenty-two miles, I think, out of the way in Flemington, New Jersey, which you can't. Well, even... I, <laughs> I, 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 I know that if we get to Flemington, that uh, there's a road that goes from Flemington to Newark. Okay. So it wasn't like I was that far out of the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, Route Twenty Two. Uh, route Twenty Two goes there, goes into Newark. So. So we There's a roadway that goes there. We stop yeah. by Flemington. So we go to Flemington, get to Wawa, and all the gas pumps are closed down, shut down. In New Jersey, the only state in the fucking nation that thinks that people are too stupid to pump their own fucking gas. You go to Pennsylvania, pump your gas. Go to Maryland, pump your gas. Every fucking state in the nation, you can pump your gas. They don't need to staff everybody. They don't need any. They don't need anybody. Go to Florida, pump your gas, and and and, and you, know, you go to you, you go to Bucky's. I, I don't know if Nikki Smokes ever been to Bucky's. Bucky's is the greatest gas station of all time. Nikki, you right. big Bucky guy. You big Bucky guy, Nikki. You big Bucky you guy. Best beef jerky in the entire country. Absolutely. Uh, Frank, are you going to name every state? I feel like you're going to name every state that. No, 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 he's going. Yes, no, 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 no. Uh, not but, even uh, at Wawa's yet. But so anyway, in New Jersey, you have to. Uh, there has to be an attendant that pumps gas. So he, any Wawa has like twelve pumps. Have to, they only have like four of them or six in use at most because they have to have an attendant mm-hmm. at uh, the pump the gas. You can't do it yourself. You go. You go to Wawa, like Bucky's down in Florida. They have like two hundred pumps 
People are going in and out, pumping their own gas. No issues, no problems. So this Wawa did not have anyone there that could pump gas. The guy who called was supposed to pump in gas at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning was out, was, didn't uh, decide, I'm not working today. Because New Jersey, uh, you don't have to work to get paid. To be clear, I mean, we pull up, the Wawa's is clearly open, bustling, people coming in and out, but all the pumps just have cones in front of them. So then, Frank, you, after you got some food, you came out to the parking lot. You want to take it from there? Yeah, so I do a rant. <laughs> How, I mean, it's yeah, not, it's, 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 scheduled, yeah. it's what pays the bills. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you mean? And, my, and my rant is like, okay, it, it's over. We got to start letting everyone in New Jersey pump their own gas. It's, it's, yeah, you can go everywhere else in, the, in this country and pump your own gas, but New Jersey, you can't. And now I can't get my fucking gas because there's nobody here. Uh, and, and everyone in this state is so fucking lazy. Nobody wants to work anymore. You go to, you go, we got self checkout at every fucking grocery store. I mean, ShopRite used to have baggers and grow and uh, checkout every line open. Now they only have two lanes open. Then they have self, self checkout for uh, seven other lanes. Uh, no baggers anymore. Nobody. You just have, and you have, if you want to, to check out with a traditional cashier, the line's out the back of the motherfucking store. We had, so you had to get self-checkout. So you do the self-checkout, and it just drives me fucking nuts with the self-checkout. So, and, 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 then, and then on top of it, <laughs> they uh, gaslight you. You put something uh, in the bagging area, and it says, unexpected item in bagging area. Please remove from bagging area. <laughs> then you take it, and so, then you go, so, item removed from bagging area. Please so, return to bagging area. But then you put it back in your unexpected item in bagging area. Please return to bagging area. So, Frank has just done a three-minute yeah. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld fucking. I'm gonna bring this back, Mikey. I'm, I'm gonna bring this back. So out. again, we're we're at about six a.m. None of us have really slept. We're all just loopy, and Frank has done a full two-minute video, just so funny. I was like on the floor, rolling, crying, of laughter. He's literally screaming, "I want my Wawa gas because it gets five percent off per gallon." And we all finally like <laughs> calm down. We get in the car. We sit down. And, and, and my, mind you, it's mind you, it's 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 seven a.m. Yeah, it's we've so been, early. We're, we're all just shot. We've his been driving for seven has, hour. Has his window down, Abe, and this guy sticks his head in the window. And Frank, you want to take it from there? <laughs> Do you have jobs? You know the government makes laws that are there to protect us. They know what they're doing. And you should just roll with it if the place is not open. That's another problem. You know, there are too many people just complaining in this government. That's the problem. We have to all band together. <laughs> and I was not having it. Who was this person? Just a random? This, a random man walked up. He sticks his head in the window. And the first thing he says is, do the three of you even have jobs with that tone? Uh, and and I, 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 I think I actually saw his car. I, it, was a, uh, it was a Prius that had a... Uh, let this country burn uh, Frank bumper back. sticker. Oh, that, uh, makes a, uh, that makes he sense. That makes sense. He had a, uh, he had a, uh, he had a, uh, another bumper sticker that said "Shut up and max up," which was actually covering up a uh, bumper sticker that said "Resist." So oh. he a he asked. So he's a communist. He, had, he asked if we had jobs, and then yeah, I think all, he, I think he actually works for Stephen Colbert. We all paused for a second because we were so tired and shot, and then this was just such a shock. And then he was beginning a monologue before he could get his first sentence out. Frank just goes, no, we're not listening to it. And then just starts reaming the guy out. Yeah. Just like fucking explodes. And the guy literally, it looked like Frank had pulled out a fucking handgun. He, he literally walked away from the car, slowly his hands up and said, have a good day, guys, and walked away. That's you know, Frank, Frank needs to run for president because that's what should, should be like. <laughs> the forefront of this country is we're not having this America first. Fuck you. Here's our rant. Get your little communist bullshit out of here. And don't uh, put the, the government makes the government makes laws to protect us. Did he really say that, or is that a Frank fact? He try. I think that might have been the one sentence he tried to get out, and then yeah. Frank erupted like a volcano. And then no, we no, he essentially left. essentially said the government knows what they're doing. That's why yeah. they have yeah. the laws. Something oh, like that. guy sounds intelligent. No, he's very smart. Very smart. <laughs> Love this guy. Oh, uh, that was an all time moment, Frank. And that's <laughs> when I heard him say that. That's when I went, "No, they don't know what they're doing." <laughs> 
Oh, man. And we made it to you the know, Seinfeld game. It was great. Coney Island. Gorgeous, gorgeous stadium. Great bobblehead, too. I don't know if anyone's ever... Have you ever been there, Smokes? You ever uh, checked no. out the parks? It's, it's mm-hmm. right up... Crazy I hardly even go to MLB games. There's no way I go to a minor league game unless my friend's playing in it. Well, you go with Frank, he pretty much plays in it. So they put him on there. He always, <laughs> always ends up on the field. I would go with Frank just for the experience. Well, yeah. when Frank comes to town, we'll definitely be going to one. Hopefully it's uh, – I'm secretly sneaky hoping that Frank doesn't get his, his trip to uh, to Germany selfishly so he can come to Why? So he comes Germany- to Germany. Germany is not looking very likely right now. I, 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 I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I want someone to help me. I not. I'm not saying pay for me. I'm no, saying we'll, we'll talk Saturday. Ticket, ticket hotel, uh, air, airfare, uh, airplane, and hotel. If I don't have all three, where I can actually know I can get all three, yeah, I'm not we, going to Germany. I mean, are you going to go by yourself, Frank? I might grab somebody to go with me, but yeah, as they say. In Germany, bon voyage, right? I mean, I just couldn't imagine Frank in Germany by himself. You just like walking down like the red light district. I mean, like I think that'd be fucking hilarious. Yeah, that'd be nuts. That's that. <laughs> like, like that Frank. Frank awesome. thinks he's buying a chocolate bar, and like thirty minutes later, he's just tripping balls on mushrooms. That would be, uh, yeah, no, no fucking way. I love the uh, the edible one where Frank takes the edible. The one of the top five videos of all time on on Barstool. Um, you know what? Uh, you know, but that guy just could not handle the hot stuff. No, he could not. Frank. For some hot stuff, baby, this evening. I need some hot stuff, baby, tonight. I want some hot stuff, baby, this evening. Yes, that's right. We have partnered up with Hot Stuff Sauce, made an Exo Taco on Syracuse University Hill in Syracuse, New York. It is the best hot sauce you can ask for. So go to hotstuffsauce.com and get your hot sauce now with promo code Tank10. You'll receive 10% off your order. That's T- tank 10 at hotsauce.com for the 10% off the best hot sauce you can get. Dude, I'm all out of hot sauce. I just fucking checked. I gotta, I gotta get some more. I gotta tell the guys to give it to me. Well, use tank, use tank 10, get the pro- promo code. You know what? By the way, a great idea. I'm gonna do that. By the way, the Mets made an announcement today. Oh, boy. Okay. That next season, they're oh. retiring the numbers of. Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden. I actually happen to be wearing a uh, Daryl Strawberry spring training jersey. Love it, Frank. So very appropriate to be wearing that today. Uh, and, and, and it's about time. You know, I, 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 I was looking over some of the bums that have worn 16 and 18 over the, year, over the years since uh, those two have left. Uh, Hideo Nomo, in his brief tenure at the Mets, wore 16. Derek Bell. Wore 16. David Cohn, when he came back to the Mets at the end of his career, wore 16. Doug Mankiewicz, Paul LaDuca, Angel Pagan, Rob Johnson, who I don't even fucking remember, Rick Ankeel, who was washed up bum, Dice K. Matsuzaka, Danny I feel like I know fucking... that Dice K name. Yeah, he was a uh, Japanese pitcher who had a couple of good years with the Red Sox. Got it. Danny fucking Muno. Or number 16. Danny fucking Muno! Seven hours, no hits! Frank. I once saw him. Three straight balls hit right to him. A game I was at. Three straight balls hit right to him. Ground balls. He booted all three of them. Why don't you tell them? Danny (laughs) fucking Muno. Or number 16. Then Dilson Herrera. Alejandro Deaza, oh, we're doing Kevin Kazmierski, sure. Austin Jackson, Jake making me sick, okay. and Travis Junkowski. And then You're, 18. You have I mean, to be this, reading that off a list, Frank. There's no yes, way yes, that's all yes. in your head. I am reading. I'm reading I was going to say, list. Frank. I, I, do remember, fucking I, I do remember some of them. Uh, 18, listen to this. Uh, 18, <laughs> was, 18 went to Brett Saberhagen. Uh, then it went to Jeff McKnight. Jeff McKnight was... Six different uniforms, uh, six different numbers with the Mets. Jeff Barry, Kevin Roberson, Takashi Kashiwata, Craig Parquet, Tony uh, Todd Haney, Daryl Hamilton, RIP. Uh, he was a good player, Daryl Hamilton, with the Mets. I think his girlfriend killed him or something like that. Something weird nice. happened when he died. Crazy. Jeff, De- Jeff D'Amico, 
manager Art Howe, who went from Moneyball to looking like a fucking uh, com- comatose corpse as a manager at the Mets. Marlon Anderson, Jose Valentin, Moises Alou, good player. Good player, Moises Alou. <laughs> good guy. Jeremy Reed, Ryota Agashi, Tim Tuffle as a coach, war number 18, Travis Darno, uh, Rajay Davis, Ryan Cordell, Jose Peraza, and Nick Plummer. And now, finally, finally, those numbers are going to be retired for two icons. Basically, two the people, uh, Dwight Gooden and Dwight Dallas Strawberry. I was nine and ten. I was nine years old when uh, Dallas when Dwight Gooden went twenty and uh, twenty four and four and won the Cy Young with a one fifty six ERA. Uh, I mean, these are the guys most responsible for making me Mets fans. And uh, finally, tell, they're, tell them about that. Finally, they're getting numbers retired. Tell them about that famous poster of Dwight Gooden. Yeah, for uh, a good 10 years, uh, there, the, as soon as you got over the Lincoln Tunnel by the uh, Port Authority bus terminal, there was a giant mural of Dwight Gooden that was painted on the side of a building. You can Google and it. it was there for a decade. It was a, uh, and uh, every time you come, uh, you went into Manhattan at uh, the bus terminal or, or by uh, Lincoln Tunnel, you'd see that thing. And it was just, it was like, this is, this is iconic. He was New York. Dwight Gooden. When he was on, there was nothing like Shea Stadium. You know, fans began going to games when Dwight Gooden was there. And they started hanging up K's in the corner. They called it K Corner. Now, across ballparks everywhere, they have digital K readers. And it all started because of Dwight Gooden. It's awesome. Uh, finally, it's crazy that they're uh, able to get the respect they deserve. So, shout out to Doc and... Uh, and Robert, so, and now, now football season's almost here. I'm doing a million draft orders. Well, Frank, let's talk about it. Before we get into the NFL, we got college football coming up. Uh, Notre Dame, it's week zero, playing Navy. They're a 20 and a half point favorite. Got to be good for you. Got to be happy about that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, but uh, I, if, if smart money, it says take Navy. Plus 20 and a half, right? Yes. Yeah. Notre Dame's going to win the game. But yeah. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Uh, if Notre Dame's up seventeen in the fourth quarter, they're going to run the ball, and they're not going to. They're, they're not. They're, 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 they don't want to embarrass the Navy. It's going to be a fast game too, because Navy's going to be fucking running the whole. Yeah. Game, you know. So it's, yeah. it's going to be one of the fastest games of the year. It's already. The- Speaking of Navy, okay. Navy doesn't just have football. <laughs> they sent him a hat. Well, Is Frank a Notre Dame guy? Yeah, that's why I brought it up. Spotify gotcha. listeners, these well, it's random. So it's it's uh, Knicks, uh, Dolphins, Mets, uh, Notre Dame, Arsenal, the Devils, Arsenal, and the Devils. Well done, Smokes. Devils are, are fundamental. Make it make sense. Devils. And this was just sent to me by uh, the uh, coach. You of just the, throw uh, it right over your glasses, didn't you? Eh, whatever. Where are my glasses? They're on, they're, they're on your they're head, Frank. Your head, you put the hat right? on top of it. Frank, they're under your head. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay. yeah, this was sent to me by Navy Water Polo. Oh, nice. That's Maybe you'll, you'll go see a game. So, shout out to the Navy Water Polo team. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they have to be pretty good at water polo, right? I mean, they are the Navy. Soon. Especially if you have... Uh, I hope so. Like, if they suck. If they were last be in trouble. Be actually yeah. really uh, I, I mean, uh, you got to assume that some of these guys are, are, are probably training to be SEALs. That's what I'm so, saying. So if they're not good at water polo, like how good is our Navy going to be? I got a question for you, Smokes. Yeah. Frank's been uh, in my ear pretty good about how the Dolphins' offensive line is falling apart and, you know, pretty much everything's mm-hmm. fucked. Wait, Liam, no, I can wait, wait, wait. Did you guys see the new signing? The, the, the Dolphins just made it. They just signed a, uh, an offensive lineman. You guys didn't see? What, just now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good. fucking idiot. Uh, You're an idiot. I couldn't be worse than uh, Lee Meikenberg. <laughs> couldn't be worse. And, you and asking me about the got... offensive line? Yeah, and just the team in general. Like, do you, I, know I mean, I think the team's fine. The offensive line is... 
it's a crapshoot. It's like Russian roulette. I mean, especially if Armstead goes down, which he goes you know, down you, every single year. I mean, you know, you know, it could get ugly. I mean, it really could. I mean, they have the. I think they have the best skill positions in the entire division on offense and defense, but their offensive line is a huge problem. And if Armstead yeah, yeah, goes yeah. down, which history shows that he will, like, yeah, they might be. They might be fucked. If the, if the offensive line falls apart and uh, two is hurt. Those skill position players will be like having a Lamborghini out in front of a fucking uh, homeless shack. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, they'll put up numbers. Like, they still put up numbers with Teddy Bridgewater and uh, Skyler, but it's just not as useful. They just don't don't score points. They don't score points. They score fantasy points, but they don't score actual points in the game. They put up numbers with uh, Skyler Thompson. Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, like like Tyreek could still go off for 10 catches, 100 yards with – Mike White or Skyler, they just and, won't uh, find the Teddy end Bridge, zone. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater started two games last year and was hurt in both games. Yeah, I mean, he's terrible. Who's their tight end right now? Because I know Gusecki wants to the pay. Durham Smythe. Okay. All right. And yeah, and we don't really have like more, a good tight end. Yeah. He's, he's just a blocking a guy. He, and which is what. Uh, which is what Mike wants, though. Like Mike doesn't yeah. really need like a pass catching tight end when you have so Tyreek Waddle, Chosen Rosen, or Chosen Anderson. Well, it's yeah, it makes sense, but it's crazy to think that he doesn't need it coming from the offense that he came from, you know, that had George. Well, Kittle. that that's just more like Kittle being so good at blocking. Right. I think that's kind of what McDaniel was looking for because he had a pass catcher in Gasecki, but we didn't throw him the ball. I wouldn't throw him the ball either when you have those guys on the outside. He just needs after someone that, that can block. Yeah, after that, so Gasecki Gasecki was uh, was uh, was good in the uh, floor in the red zone. Yeah, but he's good in the red zone. He just uh, doesn't fit what uh, Mike McDaniel's doing. Did you guys see the whole uh, the Tua Ryan Clark drama? That whole back- yeah, and, and yeah. you notice who's here going. You notice who's here going. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I can't wait for it to happen. Scott Van Pelt was smiling for that. He can't wait to see him get hurt, just like he did it in the match. Scott Van Pelt, fucking evil. Wait, when did this happen with Scott? Never. Never. Um, never happened. Scott Van Pelt loves having people go on Sports Center and trash my teams. Hmm. Where do you think they end up in the division, Smokes and Frank? First. And hey, Mikey. Uh, first. first. Really? You're that confident? First. Yeah, they I mean, don't. I'd have to knock on wood until the wood breaks. But yeah, I mean, if everything goes right and they're healthy, I think they go first. They, they're going to finish first in the division. But if think, Armstead blows out his leg week two, uh, we could. Probably finish third. I mean, it's a really good division. I, I think when the I Dolphins are healthy, good. they're the best team in the division. Right now, they are healthy-ish. I mean, I don't know, man. Like this team has scarred me my whole life. I've never seen them win a playoff game, and every single year I say this is our year. And I think this team is good enough for this to be our year. But knowing the Dolphins, someone will get hurt, something will happen, and then I'm gonna want to go fucking jump off my balcony. I think they're. I think they're going to finish second. I think the Bills still have the the, the edge. Oh, I think the Jets are going to be. I think they'll be Aaron good. Rodgers the Jets will be good. Space. The Jets are going to be good. But here's the thing, I, Frank. I, like our division is so good that you don't have to win our division to make a run in the playoffs. It's kind of like the AFC West. Like the Chiefs might not win that division this year. I think they will, but they might not. And if they don't, the that doesn't the mean Chiefs that they're not going to make a run for the Super Bowl. And I think that's the same thing with the AFC East. I don't think you have to win this division if you want to make a run for the Super Bowl. It the helps. Chiefs gonna, the Chiefs are going to win the West. I, I, I think the for Raiders sure. are a lost cause. The Raiders are a lost cause. Uh, the Chargers the are good. Are the Broncos the Chargers are, are good. Back. The Chargers will be a uh, playoff contender. I don't think yeah, so. Their so, the coach is, their coach is a, a, ba- uh, a baboon. He's an idiot. That Who? the Chargers coach is an idiot. oh Staley yeah he, he will find a way so like I re- I thought he was really good I really did and um, I mean when he gambles and he gets it right he looks like a genius but he just gambles too much and he doesn't go more than fifty percent he's like a forty five percent every gambler better. is though every game like we're all gamblers. unless you're me yeah wait what oh, unless you're you right yeah yeah, um, yeah. I just win well well blackjack's a fucking yeah. evil game. Evil. Yeah, Frank, Frank, you shouldn't be playing blackjack. You should no, just no, be no, betting no, against no, the Mets. No. You should bet against the Mets every single game. So when they lose, you make money, and if they win, they win. No, 
this is what I'm going to tell you because this is what Mickey, everybody doesn't understand. Mickey, is wait, Mickey, hold on. go ahead. Frank. I've been doing that every day since August first. Oh, you have all right. So, so all those rants. They're being paid for by the Mets' loss. So the Mets losing is the best thing for you. You get content. No, it's not. You get not. escorted out of the game. You get standing ovations. And now you're making money. What am I missing here? He doesn't bet a lot. It doesn't That's matter. You don't have to bet a lot. But it, the Mets are paying for Frank's lunch every day is what I'm saying. And the thing Cameo is, and the Mets losing is all Frank needs to survive in life. He's fine. I'd, I'd rather have him win. Now, I mean, of course, but if they're not going to win, you might as well and, make and, money. And, on and it. if I and if it, and if ever I could find a way that my betting against them ensures them to win, I'd I, you have to day. bet them every game. I, if I if I could bet on the Dolphins, if I could bet against the Dolphins every week, and I knew for a fact that would make them win, I would gladly lose my money every single. Me week. too. I, I I do that for the Dolphins. So yes. Frank, what's I can't do it with the Dolphins. I can't bet against the Dolphins. And anytime I do, they win. So it's like, yeah, I'm happy, but I'm also kind of like, damn, I just lost like 300 bucks. What's your Jets prediction? That was the one thing you got cut off before, but I don't think mm. what I've heard you say, I don't think you think it's going to go well. I think, I think the Jets are going to be good. Bit. Wait, were you asking me or Frank? Frank, because I heard you say you think they're going to do well, Smokes. Yeah, I think they're fine, yeah. I think they're going to be a slight disappointment. I think they're going to be like uh... – Nine and eight, and uh, not make playoffs. Dirt Nine place. and eight, ten and seven. I think they'll get in. I mean, the AFC is tough, Frank. It's really tough. But the Jets' like first five games are miserable. I'll read them to you. It's really bad. Yeah, I think. Bills, um, Bills are plus one twenty right now. The Jets are plus two fifty. Dolphins are plus two ninety. Damn, the Jets are up to two fifty. They were plus like one fifty a week ago. Well, Mark, getting so fucking Dalvin Cook. Fucking goddamn motherfucker! It's all right. We're gonna get Jonathan Taylor, but listen, listen to the uh, the Jets. Opening. What are we trading to get Jonathan Taylor? I mean, does it matter? I think the Bears. If it's just it. draft picks, I don't care. Like, get get a fucking running back, Frank. You know, Mostert's not gonna last. You know, Wilson's not gonna last. You don't know what you have in hey. A chain. He could be really good, or he could just be another speedster that we plug in for ten plays a game. Go get a premier back in Jonathan Taylor. He's 24 years old. You could have him for the next six, seven years. And if Tua goes down, you have one of the best running backs in the NFL in your backfield. Go oh, get Jonathan Taylor. Team. The you window is right now. Cool. This team has this year and next year to win a Super Bowl. And then you have to pay Waddle. You have to pay JP. You got to pay Holland. You got to pay. You still got to pay Christian Wilkins now. Go get it done. You have nothing to lose. Like this team has not won a playoff game in 23 years. Maximize every spot on this roster. It's not. It's very simple. All right, you convinced me. Let's do it. There it uh, is. But I'd rather have Dalvin Cook. But I, I mean, Dalvin JT's Cook. a better long-term asset to have than he's Dalvin. Too, thought, he's right? 24 years old. He's only been in the league for three years. Mm -hmm. eh, but the price was right for Dalvin. And we're, we're going to get him. I mean, he's technically under a rookie deal right now. And if we pay him, I'm sure we'll give him a little signing bonus and then restructure his deal later on. Even, even if he comes and plays for us with a year and we win a couple playoff games and maybe – have a shot at the Super Bowl, it's worth it. I don't give a fuck. I mean, Frank, like, this team has been so bad. We deserve something. I hope so. I hope Not so. Not how the sports gods work, brother. I'm, I'm looking at, dude, the AFC East, the AFC North, and the AFC West is they're probably the three best divisions right now. The NFC... The NFC is a cakewalk. The Dolphins yeah. would finish the well, second, the second seed in the NFC. Who's stopping Philly? Uh, in the, the Niners know, could. Niners, Philly, Niners, Niners, that's it. I, NFC, like you could NFC say is, Dallas on paper until Dak Prescott takes a snap in the postseason and he just turns into the worst quarterback of all yeah. time. But it's it's Philly and San Fran. The NFC like, that's it. has the NFC has two good teams and the rest are a bunch of shit. Mediocre. <laughs> uh, like I can't I can't even tell you who would win the AFC. I can't even tell you right now. Here's, here's how bad the NFC is. The Detroit Lions are going to win their division? No, they're not, Frank. Nope. No, they're not. Green, Green Bay is winning that division. Green, the Green Bay, Green Bay will win that division. The Bears are going to win. Take, take right now, plus 430. The Bears are going to win. Green Bay the wins NFC that division. The Green Bay wins no the division. Way. There's no, no Green Bay Packers wins. Are winning division. Green Bay is not the Packers win the division. The Packers win that division. They win that division. Nikki, uh, here's my prediction for the Packers. They're going to have a top five pick. 
Oh, I'll, I'll bet you that right now, Frank. Let's go. Let's make a bet. I want to do a sandwich bet. We're gonna do a. Uh, Come on, Frank. You can't. You can't be talking like that and not put some money where your mouth is. We could. We could put lunch sandwich. on it. How about that? We'll put lunch on it. Okay. Very sounds good. Next, next steak dinner. I want to do. Uh, so you guys are doing uh, the Packers. Well, Frank Packers. said Packers will finish with a top five pick. So all the Packers have to do is not be a bottom five team this year. Uh, no, I no, love no, no. my chances. I, uh, I want that's what chicken. you said. I, I, I'm not. That, that, that's a crapshoot. Here's the play. Here's the, you, you think they're going to win division. I don't think the I think the Packers are going to be sub 500. So see, now he's changing his bet. I mean, I'll still take that bet. I'll do one better, and I'll say let, let's just division. do let's let's do. I don't think the Packers will finish worse than second in the division. I mean, I'll take the Vikings, and then Mikey can take the Bears. And I got the Bears. I got. I the Bears. think the Vikings are good too. Vikings are good. I think it's Vikings Lions. and Green Bay. Lions. Lions going with that. Lions team. are the most overrated team in the league. They they, they were are. three and seven after and got hot suspended. against a bunch of scrubs. Like, come after, on, bro. Like, I'm not bought in. Who gives a fuck about the Lions? I, fuck the Lions. They're they're, they're so overrated. The Lions. Here here's my prediction. Lions are not only going to win the division, they're going to win a playoff game. Wow. I'll bet you they don't even make the playoffs. Hey Frank, you got a lot of right takes. That one's wrong. The Bears are going to win the division at plus 430. I'm going to cash out. Bears have no win. shot. Yes, they do. They have a shot. They have 0% chance. They have a shot. They're going to be very good this year. Zero. Be, they are going to surprise everybody. I'm going to say like zero. Right if Justin if, Field stays healthy, I think he's actually a superstar. When Justin the Bears Field dominates the, the league this year, I want a formal apology from everybody on this fucking podcast. Thank you. All right. I see. Uh, Not for I me. Mike, I just said he's a superstar. I see. Uh, I see. Mike DeFrisco is trying to chime in in the back there. Nikki, chill. It's bear season. Well, uh, I, <laughs> know, uh, I know. I know. I know. Uh, I know. He's. Uh, I wonder. I wonder what football. his favorite team is. I, I know he's concentrating on football right now because baseball right now. Uh, the White Sox are at ten. I see. Hey Frank, we're not talking about the White Sox right now. We're talking about football. Music yeah, city. I'm done with baseball, Frank. <laughs> Music City, White Sox, Nashville bound. <laughs> the amount of singing I've listened to from Frank in the last yeah. like week. Unreal. Now. If, if Unreal. the White Sox go to Nashville, that would be good insane. Riddance. Good riddance. They good riddance. should. See they should, later. bro. Don't let the door kick you in the ass on the way out. Right, this will be the ultimate like stab in the back move from Jerry Reinsdorf. Yeah, you guys need to just survive. You need him to, you know, I don't want to be evil. You need him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frank understands. He knows, right? Yeah, we, we're, we're on the same path there, New Jersey. All right, do we have any ass to tank? It's uh, Frank, we got all the ass to tank. First one, uh, who is your favorite comedian of all time, Frank? Favorite comedian of all time? All time. Sam Kinison. Why? Because he was hilarious, funny, loud, crass. I, I remember one time he was like, uh, I was talking about, uh, he was, uh, you ever see, uh, he was back to school with uh, uh, Ronnie Dangerfield? No, I haven't. Oh. You should be no respect, that, that thing? Yeah. Thank you so there, was a, there was a, he was the, uh, the uh, professor that had uh, Vietnam uh, stress uh, the, the syndrome. And he was always loud. It was like, uh, I remember you saw him go, so Russia with your nuclear arsenal. <laughs> I mean, Sam Kinison was great. Gone too soon. I don't even know what just happened. That was from uh, Bubba Royce. So uh, shout Thanks out Bubba Royce. Royce. Next question is from Cliff DiMartino. Uh, shout out Cliff. What's Cliff. the nicest thing a fan has ever done for you, Frank? Oh, here we go. That. Buy him a hot dog. Dan Marino? Got, got some, uh, a fan brought me that Dan Marino frame jersey. Oh, wow. That's I need to get on your status, Frank. The nicest thing I get is like a beer, which I'm grateful for, but I would have loved a nice signed Dan Marino jersey. A signed uh, Dan Marino beer bottle would be cool, too. Just yeah, I would take that. Um, all right, next question. Frank, what is going to be the Giants' record this season? 
10 and 7. Wow. That's, that's a lot of wins. Many. Yeah, that's a lot of wins for right? You sure? They're going to be I, they're going to be between I, I, they're going to be anywhere between 10 and 7 and 8 and 9. They're going to be middle of the pack, maybe slip in the playoffs again. All right. Okay. Um, and uh and I, and that's mainly because of how the NFC is kind of weak. Yeah, it's dog shit. This one is from Chevy Chester Tank. What's your favorite animal? Dolphin. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, this is the last question we have. Uh, Frank, why are the Bears going to win the Super Bowl this year? And uh, why are they the best team of all time? That's from at Real Mikey Betts. Uh, that's because uh, it was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Not based in reality. <laughs> Sorry. For sure, for sure. Um, all right. You want to take us out with the song? Frankie Jingles? Quartet. Bam, bam. Going down to Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, I'm not doing this. No. The Chicago White Sox, I will see. <laughs> Ivy, click like, subscribe. See you next week. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.